front. Yeah, let's fill in these seats from the front. I see an Ariana and a Sarai that have chairs in front of them that can sit in those chairs.
praising. Come on. But I'd say, I'm so thankful to be in the house of God with y'all tonight. And I, I'll be honest with you guys, I'm gonna be completely transparent. It has been a rough day for me. It has been a rough week, honestly, for me. And it feels like I'm in the middle of a storm this week because I have a lot going on in my life. And it's been hard to like focus this week on what really matters and keep my eyes set on what really matters. But this next song we're about to sing says, when I lock eyes with you, and the whole song is about being in the gaze of God and being close with God and being close to his presence. So as we move into this next time of worship, I want you to forget everything else that's going on with your week. Forget that teacher who yelled at you. Forget your friend that you had a fight with. Forget all of it. It doesn't matter. Not while we're here. Not while the presence of God is in the room because the only thing that matters when the presence of God is in the room is connecting. So as we move into this next time of worship, I want you to connect. Focus in. Lock eyes with God because when you lock eyes with somebody, you get to know them at a deeper level. So don't we want to do that with God? as we continue to worship. God, I just bless this room with eyes to see you, God. I thank you for this group of students, God. Bless them as we move into this next time of worship.
dangerous but they're important words for us because if we're not willing to let God burn away the bad things in us then we're not giving him our all so let's sing this bridge again here in a second and let's give God our all tonight
You know, sometimes as Christians, we, we forget, we, we just forget sometimes what God is for us. We sometimes forget how awesome he is. As the song says, we forget that he created everything and by everything, I mean legitimately everything. He created and thought of every finite detail all the way down to the fact that you don't even have to think about the fact that you're breathing right now. That's, we can't even comprehend how awesome he is, how powerful he is, how, how gracious he is, how patient he is with us in the midst of all our mistakes, all of our sin, all of our struggles, he still did all of this for us. So as Christians, you know, when we worship, we're showing love to God. We're praising him because of how awesome he is. Do you guys get that? He's so good and so powerful and we don't deserve any of it. Yet, yet he gives it freely. He's already done it. He's continuing to do it and will continue to do it for us and we're gonna sing that chorus again. And I want you to just to sit there and just try to begin to imagine just how amazing and awesome God our Father is. Such an awesome God, so mighty, so Even though we don't always show it, even though we might go days without telling you or even talking to you, Father, we love you because you gave everything to us and asked nothing in return just because you love us that much. Forgive us when we don't realize and remember just how amazing and powerful and incredible you are. And thank you, Father, for loving us even when we don't deserve it. We love you, Father. Amen and amen. You may be seated, and it is my pleasure and my honor to introduce Rachel to come bring the word today. Do you need this microphone? There you go. How's it going, Multiply Youth? It's good to see y'all tonight. I know I'm not Justin. Um, Justin is traveling right now. He's doing some cool stuff for Jesus, and he'll be back with us next week. But for now, I am Justin Simpson. Uh, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> um, I don't look like Justin. I'm a lot prettier than Justin, um, at least I think. Uh, <laughs> I am so excited to be speaking to you guys about this What Now series. So previously, keeping up with the Israelites. Um, we know that the Israelites, God has parted the Red Sea, right? And we know that they walked on dry ground because the Red Sea was parted by God and they worshiped him and they were having a good time. So after the Red Sea, let's catch up with the Israelites because some stuff happened. So let's jump in. And we're in Exodus 15, and the Israelites, they leave the Red Sea, and they're going to travel to three different deserts. So say these after me. They travel to Shur, they travel to Mara, and they travel to Elim. Okay, and these are three deserts, and there's like no water, no food. They stink. It's worse than Coachella. It's a straight up bad time, okay? And God provides water for them, which is like, yay, that's a bonus, right? That's a good thing. God comes through with the water. Then they leave Elim, and they travel to another desert. Yay, more desert. Um, and they travel to another desert. They go to the land of Sin, or Sin. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. 
and it's between Elim and it's between Sinai. And we know that Mount Sinai is where Moses receives the Ten Commandments from God, right? So they're almost there. They're almost to Sinai. So they cross the Red Sea. They stop and they worship God like Pastor Justin um, told us about last week. And now they're just following Moses to the promised land. And they're just going through desert after desert. So I can imagine the Israelites thinking, like, that's kind of anticlimactic, God. Like, you just parted the Red Sea. Like, we have freedom from slavery, and now we're just walking through, like, the wasteland. Now we're just walking through the wilderness and the desert. Like, this, this kind of sucks. Is this really where our freedom gets us? Is this where freedom sets us up for? But I'm here to tell you all tonight, there's a journey. Say it with me. There's a journey. There's a journey. There's a journey that's necessary to walk out before the Israelites can reach the promised land. Because guess what? God parting the Red Sea, God doesn't stop at parting the Red Sea. He has even more for his people, and that's the promised land. It's the land of flowing milk and honey. It sounds pretty good to me. Like, that's paradise. So I want y'all to know that God has more for you than just receiving freedom. He wants to take you deeper. He wants to show you himself in a brand new way. He wants you to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. He wants you to not only receive freedom, but walk out in the freedom. Can I get an amen? amen. All right. So God has more for you, but you kind of have to travel through the desert in order to get to the promised land. So that's what we're talking about tonight. So how do we make it through the desert to God's intended destination? Which brings us to our first point. We need to trust God in the desert. Trust God in the desert. You see, the Israelites are weak. They're hungry. They're thirsting. It's been about two months since God has parted the Red Sea. And I want y'all to catch this because this is kind of crazy. In February, we did our freedom series. February was about two months ago. It's almost like we're walking with the Israelites. So we've been walking through a desert with them. And now we need to join them on this journey and learn from them. So it's been about two months that they've been walking in these deserts. So let's jump in to Exodus chapter 16. Let's catch up with the Israelites, see what they're doing. In verses 2 through 3, this is what we're going to read. There too, the whole community of Israel complained about Moses and Aaron. Now they're complaining. If the Lord had only killed us back in Egypt, they moan. There we sat around pots filled with meat and ate all the bread we wanted. But now you have brought us into this wilderness to starve us all to death. When you're in the desert, your past looks pretty good. I'm going to say it again. When you're in the desert, your past looks pretty good. I want you all to catch this. The Israelites were in bondage to slavery. They were building bricks. They were getting beaten it was not a good time. And yet, in the wilderness, in this desert, they would rather be back to being slaves. Like, how does that make sense? The whole plagues that we talked about with frogs and locusts and Pharaoh saying no, and then finally yes, and them escaping to the Red Sea. Like, that whole thing was to get out of slavery, and now they want to go back? That doesn't make sense. But just because the journey is difficult, just because the journey is, is new, just because it's uncomfortable, doesn't mean you should go back to the prison cell you were living in. See, we might be alone right now, we might be tired, we might be stressed, we might be anxious, trying to live in the freedom that we received back in February, but that doesn't mean that we go back to the ways that kept us in bondage in February. That doesn't mean we become slaves again to what we were enslaved to in February. So my question for you is, will you trust him? Because God shows up in verse 4. Let's read it. Then the Lord said to Moses, look, I am going to rain down food from heaven for you. Each day the people can go out and pick up as much food as they need for that day. I will test them in this to see whether or not they follow my instructions. Now, Chris in the back is going to help me out with a special song. Let's play it. Y'all know this? Amen. <laughs> so let's read this again. If you didn't think, yes, it's a great song. If you don't know it, go home and bug your parents and jam out to it in the car. 
So in verse 4, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Look, I'm going to rain down food from heaven for you. This is cloudy with a chance of meatballs before the movie ever came out. Like, do you all understand how crazy this is? So just as the journey gets hard, just as the desert is difficult, just as that difficulty sets in, just as we start to give up, God steps in. God opened the heavens and rained food down for the Israelites for the Israelites to eat. So I want y'all to catch this, God provides. Say it after me, God provides. So just when you get tired, God opens the heavens and he goes full cloudy with the chance of meatballs for you. And he brought the Israelites manna just as they were complaining. So tonight that brings us to our second point, trust that God provides. The Israelites are not where their freedom thought it would get them. They're in the desert. They thought after the Red Sea, ooh, we're only going up from here. Like, is there a palace nearby? Is there a lake that we can just swim in? Like, maybe you feel the same way. Maybe you received freedom and you had this crying mascara running or guys, no mascara running, maybe snot running. Maybe you had this altar moment, but you find yourself still hanging out with the same people that encourage you to go back into your bondage. Maybe you're still feeling tempted to do the things that you were enslaved in. But God wants you to know that he will provide for you. You'll get to your promised land. He'll take you deeper because you know what? He's gonna give you the tools. See, God doesn't call you out of slavery and then be like, see ya, good luck, <laughs> I'm out. He doesn't do that. He provides you with the tools because he loves you, because he cares about you. So you know what? Just when you're feeling down, he's going to open the heavens and he's going to give you joy. He's going to give you his strength. He's going to give you community. Look around, y'all. This is your community. You got to lean on one another when you're in the desert. He's going to give you hope. He's going to give you endurance. In the book of James, it says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance, perseverance, and the testing of your faith that produces that endurance, it's going to be made complete and mature in you so that you don't lack anything. Woo! Did y'all know that was in the Bible? That's good. That's good. And that's a promise for you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Cheers for the Bible. That's for you. But I can't help but wonder how many of us have stopped walking in our freedom. I can't help but wonder how many of us have given up on going to the next level because we've forgotten that God is our provider. We're like the Israelites. Two months ago, we praised God. Woo, he's our provider. Thank you, Jesus, for my freedom. Two months ago, the Israelites said, thank you, Jesus, for parting the Red Sea. And now two months later, they're like, this sucks. I'd rather be a slave because at least I had bread and meat back then. Ooh, don't get it twisted, y'all. Don't get it twisted. I want y'all to get this. God parted the Red Sea two months ago, and now he's providing for the Israelites. He can still come through for you. Don't cut God short. Don't let your song of praise turn into a song of complaining. He's our provider. In fact, the craziest part of this story, I think, so far is that God hears the Israelites complaining, and then immediately, what does he do? He says to Moses, and he's like, actually, I've heard y'all complaining, so guess what? I'm going to gift you food from heaven. Like, what? God is crazy. How many of us growing up, we threw a tantrum in the grocery store? Like, we're lying on the floor, break dancing, squirming on the floor. There's tears, there's snot, and the Karens walking by are like, you need to get your child together. Like, I would not... If this was my little Timmy, he wouldn't be crying on the floor. Like, have we had? Yeah, okay. Now raise your hand if your mom was like, okay, you get an ice cream party because you threw a tantrum on the floor. Mm, yeah, not a lot of hands, not what I thought. But that's literally what God does. The Israelites are literally complaining like, God, can you just like, you could have killed us back then. Like, slavery was pretty fun if you asked me. Like, what? Are you kidding me? Like, the promised land is on the other side. Don't cut God short. But because he loves you and because his mercy and his grace is so big, he rains down food for the Israelites after they complain. He does the same for you and I. He's like, I know it's tough and I know it's hard and I hear you complaining. So guess what? Because I love you so much, I'm going to give you strength to go to the other side. I'm going to give you the strength to go deeper. That's the kind of God we have. We need to trust him. 
So in verses 9 through 12, then Moses said to Aaron, announce this to the entire community of Israel. Present yourselves before the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. Remember, God hears everything. And as Aaron spoke to the whole community of Israel, they looked out in the wilderness. There they could see the awesome glory of the Lord in the cloud. Like this is right after God is like, I hear y'all bad mouthing me. Then the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the Israelites' complaints. Now tell them, in the evening you will have meat, and in the morning you will have the bread, all the bread that you want. And then you will know that I am the Lord your God. Y'all, we have to trust him. Just because it's hard, trust that God will provide. But not only do we have to trust that God provides, we need to trust that when he does provide, it's enough. In fact, it's more than enough. So let's do verses 13 through 18. So everybody stand in this building for the word of the Lord. And I need y'all's help. We're going to do this Pastor Justin Simpson style. So when I like, I point back at you, y'all got me with the words. We can do this. Y'all know how this goes. Okay. All right. That evening, do we have the scripture that? Perfect. That evening, vast numbers of, does everybody know what a quail is? Raise a hand. Yeah, like small little bird. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Some people eat them. Some people don't. Okay. That evening, vast numbers of, flew and covered the camp and the next morning the area around the was wet with everybody know what dew is okay i'm just checking okay cool good okay uh when the dew e i don't know i said e uh a flaky substance as fine as blanketed the ground the israelites were when they saw it what is it they asked each other they had no idea what it was and told them it is the food the lord has given you to eat. let's eat uh these are the lord's instructions each household should gather as much as it eat. pick up two quarts for each person in your tent so the people of Israel. did as they were told some gathered a uh, some gathered a uh, but when they measured it out everyone had just Exactly. Those who gathered a lot had nothing left over, and those who gathered only a little had. Each family had just what it needed. Perfect. Y'all can be seated. Then Moses told them, do not keep any of it until morning. But some of them, oh wait, we're not there yet. I'm getting ahead of myself. So what did God do? He came and he opened up the heavens. He gave them manna. He gave them meat. Okay. Everyone had just enough. Let me say it again. Everyone had just enough. Those who gathered a lot had nothing left over. Those who gathered only a little, they had enough. Each family had just what it needed. So regardless of how big or little your family was, everyone was provided for. It was the perfect amount. God is your provider. He knows just what you need. You will have enough when you ask him. But let's look at a different group of Israelites. So let's look at 19 and 20. Then Moses told them, do not keep any of it until morning. Say it with me. Do not keep any of it until morning. But some of them didn't listen. Of course, they're Israelites. They never listen. But how many of us don't listen? Skirp. Um, but some of them didn't listen and kept it, some of it until morning. But by then it was full of maggots and had a terrible smell. Moses was angry with them. If I could have the band come up and help me for this last part. So we see that the people who held on to the bread, how many of you, like, you're at Texas Roadhouse or you're out, oh, Charlie's, and you get those really good dinner rolls, and you're like, Mom, Mom, steal one of the napkins. And, like, just, just like, you know, you dump the basket in your mom's purse, and then you walk out, they don't know a thing, and you got dinner rolls at home. Yeah, but then how many of you like waited too long to eat the rolls and they get all dry and crusty and then you put it in the microwave and then it gets too chewy? Yeah, see that's what happened to the Israelites. Those who did not trust God's provision, what did they do? They held on to the rolls for too long and they had bugs and little worms in them. They were stale, they were nasty. Y'all, when we trust God's provision, when we trust that what he has for us is enough, the food doesn't go bad right? This is what happened to the Israelites. God's provision is enough. You don't have to store up extra for yourself. So give your all, give all the energy you have in your fight for freedom,
Because God will supply you what you need the very next day. See, some of us, we say this prayer all the time. How many of us know the Lord's Prayer? Yeah, some of us. Our Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Yeah, sound familiar now? Then we get to this verse in Matthew 6, 11. It says, give us today our daily bread. What does that mean? Our daily bread. It means that every day when you wake up, you know that God will provide for you. It's not give us today our weekly bread. It's daily. That means every day you have to wake up and decide, do I trust Jesus? And not just with your words, because some of us declare this scripture. Some of us just say, Lord, I surrender. I trust you. And then we go turn around and we live our lives as if we're taking control. We're operating by our own strength, by our own wisdom. We ask our friends. We ask our parents what to do. We ask our teachers what to do. We're not operating in trust. But it says, give us today our daily bread. We have to trust God every day that he will supply the strength that you need in your fight for freedom to get through the desert. So how many of us have said, God, I trust you, but then went ahead and did something by our own strength? I know I have. Before I came here, before I was a student at SCU, before I was an employee here serving you guys, and I love doing it, I was a high schooler, just like most of y'all in this room. And when you're applying to colleges, you got to do this really annoying thing called the admissions essay. It's like, tell us about yourself. Like, what's your journey? Why should you come here? Like, that kind of thing. And it's annoying to write about yourself. Does anybody, like, not like writing and then you have to write about yourself and it's like, ew, gross? Yeah, right. So it's disgusting. It's not cool. Um, no one likes to talk about themselves. Well, some people do. Um, so... I had to write this admissions essay, and I was procrastinating hard. How many of us struggle with procrastination? Yeah. Like, I just kept on delaying this, and I was like, I don't know what to write about. Like, I had a notebook, and I wrote, like, three rough drafts. I wrote, like, five outlines. I was avoiding putting my fingers to the keys. And then I had a little chat with God, and I was asking him to help me to write this admissions essay, and something clicked. It wasn't about the essay. It was about me not trusting him with my future. I was nervous to leave the comfort of my home because I knew God called me to be here right now. And if I didn't say yes, I would still be in slavery to comfort. I wouldn't be growing. I wouldn't be speaking to you right now. I wanna be learning the lessons that I'm learning right now. So it wasn't just about the essay, but I was holding myself back. I was cutting God short because I didn't believe that he would supply me with the strength, the courage, the hope, and the endurance to be here right now. And I don't want y'all to go through the same thing. So you know what God has called you to do, or maybe you don't, and we can find that out at the altar tonight. You know who he's called you to be. But what are you telling God that he he can't provide for you. How are we living that's telling God, it's just not good enough, I'm sorry. We can't make the same mistake the Israelites did, saying that they would rather be enslaved than do the hard thing and follow God so that they can get to the promised land. I know it's hard, I know it is. But here's what Jesus says to us. He says in his word in Matthew chapter six, so don't worry about these things. What will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? And it even goes beyond the physical things. We worry about so much. These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly Father already knows your needs. Let me say it again. Your heavenly Father already knows your needs. So what does he tell us to do? Seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. He's more than enough. Trust him with your future. Trust him with your life. I know the desert is uncomfortable. I know it's fresh. I know it's new. I know you're getting hurt out there trying to live how God has called you to live. But when you trust that the God who died on the cross for you and rose from the dead for you, when you trust in that God and that Jesus, the terrain doesn't look so difficult. 
It's because you know that it's only by God's strength and not by your own that you get through the desert. So what I want us to do is we can turn the lights down a little bit. Let's spread out. Find a space in this whole room is an altar. So find your space in the altar where you're not going to be all like, are they looking at me funny? Like find your space get with God, whether it's kneeling, whether it's pacing the room, whether it's laying down, whether it's laying down on your face, I don't care. Find your space with God. God is enough, and all he wants you to do is trust him with your life. I want us to leave this room tonight confident that God is for us and that he will provide for us. But we will reach our promised land only when we rely on his provision and his strength. So right now, I just kind of want you to talk to God. Let's just have a moment with God. Talk to him like you usually talk to him. And just ask him, God, search my heart. What am I not trusting you with? Maybe there's some apologies you need to say to God tonight and say, I'm sorry that I didn't trust you with my school. I'm sorry I didn't trust you with which college I should go. I'm sorry I didn't trust you with my friendships and my relationships and my parents. But God, I'm coming back to you. I trust you. So let's just take 30 to 40 seconds. God, where am I not trusting you? And now that you've identified those areas, or if you haven't, just keep on keep on asking God where you need to trust him. But if you've identified those areas, I want you, if you genuinely want to trust God, if you want to surrender and give him the weight, the word says, come to me, all you who are weary, and I will give you rest. My burden is easy. My yoke is light. That's Jesus' heart for us. He wants you to know that tonight. So if that's your heart, if you say, God, I want to trust you. I can't fight this fight on my own. I want to know you deeper. Lord, take me to that promised land. If that's your heart, then I want you to take a few seconds and declare to God, God, I trust you with my life. I give you my life. I surrender to you. I trust in your provision. I trust that you will provide. Make that the song of your heart tonight. And now as a declaration, wherever you are, as a declaration to just you and God, I want us to practice this palms up posture like this. You can sit, you can stand, whatever you feel like is the right declaration posture. Let's have a palms up posture. What this says to God is I give you control. Open hands is not like a fist that wants to control and rule. It's an open hand that says, God, I trust you. I give it all to you. I surrender to you. And what an open hand facing heaven and facing Christ also says is, I receive your provision. I receive your strength. I receive your love. I receive your mercy. So if that's the cry of your heart tonight, I want you to take up this palms up posture and say, God, I receive. God, I release. God, I trust. Let's just take a moment and cry out to God. If that's you tonight, I want you to stand. We're going to sing a song that says, coming like a fire, coming like a flood, 
I don't care what it looks like, I'm so in love. And then we're gonna sing, all I want is you, all I need is you. So continue to have that palms up posture. And I want these to not be empty words, right? Because the Israelites, they had genuine praise two months ago, and then two months later, we're here now, and those songs can turn into complaints. But I want you to be so in love with Jesus. I want you to so trust him that the desert doesn't look like a season of complaining. The desert says, I consider it joy when I I face trials. I consider it joy because I know God will come through. It's not my own strength. I don't have to push through. I don't have to, I don't have to climb the mountain on my own strength. There's a God who's my provider. There's a God who loves me and will come beside me. He will fight for you. He will provide. He'll open up the heavens. He'll part the seas. So tonight as we sing this, palms up guys palms up when things get hard i want you to remember palms up i give it to you i relinquish control let's sing this together coming like a fire god coming like a fire coming like a flood i don't care what it looks like i'm so in love Come on. coming like a fire Coming like a flood I don't care what it looks like I'm so in love Coming like a fire Do you want more of him tonight? Like Make that the cry of your heart God, come invade this room Come invade like it like a flood Come invade it like a so fire, God Coming like a fire Coming like a flood we truly need is you, God. All we truly ever need, God, is you. Help us to understand that in our hearts, God. Pierce our souls with that truth, God, that when we leave these doors, we won't rely on anything else but you, Jesus. And when we get caught up, when our, when our eyes get cloudy with doing things by our own power, by asking our friends what to do, by looking to what the world is doing, God, remind us, it's palms up, it's palms up. It's all you, God. We surrender to you, Jesus. You're all we truly need, God. I thank you that you're so gracious, that you're so loving, that you're so generous, that even when we complain, even when we lose sight of what you do, all the miracles you've done, all the ways that you've come through for us, God, you still provide. And you'll do it again and again and again, God, even when we don't deserve it, God. 
Help us to not take that for granted. Jesus, we release what's torturing our minds to you. And we believe that you are strong enough, you're big enough, you're mighty enough to take it all, God. We fix our eyes on you, Jesus. We love you and we thank you for coming and meeting us tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You're more than enough, God. In your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. All right, you can be seated socially distance high five somebody tell them it's great seeing you here can we just give one round of applause for rachel schulte and the word that she gave today all right so first things first i want to talk about speed the light and i know that y'all have heard about it but i'm going to go over it again because it's important you know, Speed the Light is an opportunity for us to use our money to further the glory of God, further the spread of his kingdom. And we can give in many different ways, such as money we make at work, money we give being given by our parents, birthday money, whatever you want to do, you can give to Speed the Light. Uh, we have buckets in the back if you would like to give now. We also have jars that uh, we can give you if you want to do like a yearly total. It's great. Anyways, so now we have... The Falcon and Winter Soldier watch party is about to wrap up. The last episode is coming out Friday. We will be watching two episodes on Friday. You should come. It's for high school, or, or not Friday, Sundays. I, it's Sundays. Uh, I'm still on the old schedule. But not to overshadow the high schoolers, but where are my middle schoolers at? Yes, sir. That's right. We've heard your cries. We are now bringing a watch party specifically for middle schoolers. We're going to start on May 7th, which is a Friday. And we're going to be starting with the Bad Batch. Yeah. So if you are a middle schooler, please come to that. It's going to be great. If you have any money, there's offering in the back. So now, let's get ready for Late Night with Joko. <laughs> night with Joko. I, of course, am the one and the only Joko. Where's my suit? That is a very good question. Um, I kind of forgot. It's been so long, I kind of forgot what I do on the show. Um, but next week, the suit will be back. Rest assured, it will be back. And without further ado, we're going to get rolling with a game. A very fun game with my favorite co-host, Asher Vanderberg. Come on out. You, you can't even lie to me. We all know that's Justin. Justin is your favorite co-host. I definitely did not that. shake my head when I was okay. saying favorite okay. co-host. Yeah. You like me, though. I mean, I tolerate you. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so how have you been, Asher? I feel like I, I haven't mean, seen you in I so was, long. I was okay up until 12 seconds ago what when happened? I realized that I wasn't your favorite co-host. I may quit right now. You are my favorite co-host. Wow, that's so sweet. Anyways. <laughs> so, I've been told that you have brought a game to the show today. Oh, yeah, I've brought Did you? it. Um, Is it prepared? It's prepared, I would say so. Would you like to explain to the, uh, the so people what the it is? So, the game that we're playing, round one, 
we are playing, actually, I forgot what I called it. If you want to pop the logo up there. Seuss Raps, there you go. Seuss Raps. Seuss Raps. So who here? Are we making Dr. Seuss like wraps, like sandwiches? Yes, Ooh, yes. That's I'm why it's really spelled hungry. with a W up there. Yes, I mm -hmm. definitely can see the W. Yes. No, it's spelled with an R. We are wrapping Dr. Seuss books. Ooh. Um, as you can tell, we are both very musically inclined. Oh, 100%. Um, we both did theater in high school. Yes. We actually were in a production together. We were brothers. When, no, we weren't. No, we were not <laughs> brothers. I we was brothers senior. in law, unless I'm making up that plot line. No. That didn't happen? No, because you see, you were the sibling to Annie, and Annie married Frank, and I was Frank's boss. Oh, I thought you were related. <laughs> no. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I was the owner of the. Sh anyways, without. Anyways, we're gonna we're gonna continue that conversation later yeah, yeah, because yeah, yeah. you guys know we'll, exactly we'll what we're talking about. Yes. So, do we need people, or is it something that we're doing? I would say that we need five volunteers. Anybody in the audience? These lights are actually blinding me. I see so three. I you three, see. get up here. Uh, yeah, you three, come on up. Mm hmm Yeah. Yep. There's a there's a yep. fourth one right there. So yeah, you three in the front. Yes, you three. You Pop three up. in the front. If your hand Pop is up, up, you're coming up. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. How many you. how many times do we need yes, to invite you? Yes, you, up Clarence. Here? <laughs> and then anyone else? I mean, I could be. I think there. I saw your hand go up. The fifth one. Did your hand raise? Come on up. I Come saw on. that. I saw. Yes. That. Okay. There you go. All right. So you guys can all share the couch or stand around. Uh, this is the we got these microphones right by the couch. On the side. Yeah. Right by the side. Um. Oh, gosh, that shocked me. Oh, man. Oh, shocking. <laughs> <laughs> my, okay, That's I my laugh. That. I did not enjoy okay, that. Yeah, those really are bright. They're very bright. Okay, Asher. All right, so on my phone, I have Dr. Seuss books. Mm. Um, I am going to pull one up, and I'm going to give it to you because you have the mic first. Yes. And you do G. we have the beat ready? You don't have to play it yet, but do we have it ready? Cool. I've heard that from over there. Um, <laughs> Whenever I see his so, hand go up, I assume it's a thumbs up. So this, this book is near and dear to my heart. Oh, is it? For it is Green Eggs and Ham. Ooh. Oh, oh, he's yes. So what you need to do I is hear Green the lyrics. Ham right now, well, We're going to play a beat, and you need to rap it. We're just, just as long until we, until we say so, okay? When did okay. you just get the like, All right. book? So we good? You ready? You have to read the title. No, you don't have to read this out. If you, you just want start. to, you can. You can. You can intro yourself if you want. Magic. Do a little producer tag. Okay. All right. Are you good to? Three, two, one. Ooh. I am Sam. I am Sam. I, Sam I am. That Sam I am. That Sam I am. Do not like that Sam I am. <laughs> do, do what... Do what you like green eggs and ham. Do not like them, Sam, I am. I do not like green eggs and ham. Would you like them here or there? I would not like them here or there. I would not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam, I am. Would you like them in a house? Would you like them with a mouse? I do not like them in a house. I do not like them with a mouse. I do not like them here or there. I do not like them anywhere. I do not like green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam, I am. Would you eat them in a box? Would you eat them with a fox? Not in a box, not with a fox, not in a house, not with a mouse. I would not eat them here or there. I would not eat them anywhere. I would not, I would not eat green eggs and ham. I do not like them, Sam, I am. Everybody, you, let's get to it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Destroyed if you, if that you green eggs and ham. If you didn't know where the beat was from, it is Jesus Loves Me. Look it up. Oh. Um, next I don't song. Think, I don't think that's correct. I think it is. Yeah. Terrifying. Next song. I, I don't think that's correct. Next song is. You're an, standing on the court. Am I? I'm so sorry. I'm really not. Well, there um, goes five dollars off then, your monthly paycheck. So I owe you five dollars. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, so the next song, absolute banger. It is the Cat in the Hat. Oh. Ooh. All right. I, I don't know what beat it is for this. So you're about to have a lot of fun. Yes. All right, in three, yes, you two, it. one. Yeah. Oh. Hey. 
The sun did not shine, it was too wet to play. So we sat in the house all that cold, cold, wet day. I sat there with Sally, we sat there, we too. And I said how I wish we had something to do. Something to too do. wet to go out, too cold to play ball. So we sat in the house, did nothing at all. So we all could do was to sit, 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 sit. And we did not like it. Not at all. <laughs> not one bit. Not one bit. Then something went bump that looked to jump, to jump, to jump. Hey! <laughs> Then we saw him set on the map. We looked and we saw him, the cat in the hat. He said to us, why do you sit there like that? I know it is wet, the sun is not sunny, but we can have good lots of fun. That is funny. Funny. <laughs> I know some good games we could play, said the cat. I know some new tricks, said the cat in the hat. The hat. A, a lot of good trips, I will show them to you. Your mother will not mind at all if I do. Then Sally and I did not know what to say. Our mother was out of the house for the day. All right, there we go. Yeah, let's let's go. give it up. Oh, that was good. amazing. All right, pass the mic to the next guy. All right. I right. loved Cat in the Hat, but it also terrified me as a child. Um, oh, I'm sure it did. Five hypothetical dollars to anybody who can tell me what beat that song was from. Well, you won the five hypothetical dollars, so you may or may not get them. All right, next song we have. It's hypothetical. That means I don't have to owe him. Uh, this next one is kind of more of a rarity, all right? We got Hop on Pop. All right, hop on pop. And uh, I'll let you do the speaking. Oh my God. There you go. You, okay. In three, two, one. Where's the music? Ooh. 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 Up on pop it. Wait. Up, pop, pop is up. Cup, pop, pop, button, cup. Pop, pop, cup, pop, and pop. Mouse, 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 house, mouse on house. Mouse, house, mouse on house. All tall, we are all tall. All small, we are all small. All ball, we all, we all play ball. Ball, wall, up on a wall. All fall, off, off the wall. Day, play, we play all day. Night, fight, we fight all night. He, me, is after me. Him, Jim, Jim is after him. C, B, we see a B. C, B, three, now we see three. Three, three, three fish in a tree. Fish in a tree? How can that be? Red, red, they call me red. Red bed in, I am in bed. Red, Ned, Ted, in, and Ed in bed. Pat sat, they call him cat. Pat sat, pat on hat. Pat cat, pat sat on cat. Pat bat, pat on bat. No, Pat, don't sit on that. Sad, dad, bad, had, dad is sad. Very, very sad. He is a, he had had a bad day. What a dad, day dad had. All right. <laughs> that was perfect. Woo! Honestly, That's, I, I liked it. Here, I love, yeah, that, I love the, the beat song. of that song. I don't know anything that she said. Like, I don't, I don't know, I don't know if either, if any of you could have done that any better because that story is... Just like the same words over and over again. It is. It's just all tall, we are all tall, all it small, we are all small, all ball, we all play ball, wall, ball, wall, up on a wall, all fall. Th There's yeah, way no. too many rhymes in it. Yeah, it's, no. It's too much. Dr. Seuss. But, too much. Dare I say. Yeah. Too much. I'm excited. Went off. I'm excited because I think Josh is going to bring it <laughs> I'm, I'm excited for this one. Um, uh, hopefully we don't have any smoke going because I think Josh is about to set the fire alarm We on. got... Thank One you, fish. Thank you. Two fish. Oh, no! Red fish, blue fish. All right. If the song Two. is good, I it, it's gonna. In three. Okay. Let's go, Two. Josh. Two.
one is a little car. This one is a little star. Say what a lot of fish there are. <laughs> yes, some are red, some are blue. Some are old, some are new, some are sad, some are glad, and some are very, very bad. Why are they sad and glad and bad? I don't know. Go ask your dad. Some are thin, some are fat, some That was beautiful. No, was, that was my, you're gonna head. Actually, that was beautiful. you can take that mic. Yeah, you don't here, have to. Bring that mic back yeah. over here. Bring that mic back all the way, and then you yeah, can yeah. grab that one. You see that mic right there, buddy? That one right there? This one? Right here. Stand up. I'm gonna go grab the globe that I hit on. All right, board. and as the finale, we have one more game, but the finale for this game, uh, we have I know, that tape held, held Horton up. Hears a Who. Now, here's the thing about Horton Hears a Who. Little known fact, I played Horton in a musical one. Asher, nobody cares about your past um, things. Let's give the man a beat, the words, and the spotlight. Don't hurt yourself. You okay? All right, you ready? I'm just kidding, Asher, I love you. It's gonna be incredible, all right? Here you go. Can you read it? I can zoom in a little bit. You good? All right. Let's bring in the final beat. Final in three, two, two, seven. Seven, eight, go. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. On the 15. All right. Feel like you're in the jungle of Newell, all right? Sway with the jungle trees. You can feel it. Uh. Want some help, buddy? All right, let's go. Uh. On the 15th of May, in the jungle of Newell, in the heat of the day, in the cool of the pool, he was splashing, enjoying the jungle's great joys, when Horton the elephant heard a small noise. So Horton stopped splashing. He looked towards the sound. That's funny, thought Horton. There's no one around. There's no one around! Let's give it up! Woo! All right! That was great, man. You did great. All right. Let's you guys give can go find your seats. Rapper Let's give artists a, a huge round of applause. Thank you so much, Let's dude, for picking up my dark side. For our guests. We can head back. You can, yeah, you can sit you down. You might too. end up coming back up. And also, let's give let's give a hand to our uh, our crew back there our who DJ, have like this whole show DJ going on. DJ CA, <laughs> give it up for Christopher Alexander. Yeah! All okay. right. <laughs> well, I believe there's a commercial. Maybe, maybe not. That's the third time. I am stuck on being a brand who's being a stuck on me. Is I that Sky Jackson? I'm being a brand because you don't stick on me. Once they hold my tight, no matter what. Is this what Sky Jackson? Only Band-Aid brand plus antibiotic has antibiotic ointment directly on the pad. It delivers protection against infection in one simple step. Effective, convenient, and from the brand you trust. I am stuck on Band-Aid. Band-Aid helps you me. My name is Sky Jackson, and you're watching Disney Channel. <laughs> and I'm Debbie Ryan. <laughs> Aww. All right. I definitely didn't pull something. <laughs> All right, so this for this stage. game, we need eight, eight people. 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 I know. I know. Eight is a lot. We need eight. Eight is a bigger number than seven, which is a bigger number than eight six. Eight people let's get, that let's get you. are able to eat things that two. can be eaten. All right. I got two. All right. Well, you stay down there. So, yeah. All right. Let's make it four boys, we'll four girls. Up here. Let's do that. We got two boys, one girl so far. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, stay down there. Yeah. I, You're good. Does Chris want to do it? Huh? Does that? Do the people want does. Chris to come and do it? I think so. Come I on, am Chris. People and I want come it. on, Chris. If you nod too hard, I might, I might call you up. 
I'm pretty sure okay. the people want. Right, we'll Chris, give the people what <laughs> we'll the see. people want. Yes, there we go. All we right, have, how many? How many is that? How many people we got? We have six. We need two more people. Two more people. Two more. Yeah, go bring your friends. Yeah, go bring your friends down here. Oh wait. Is yeah, bring it? your friends down here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There yeah, you go. Yeah. There you go. Let's yeah. give it up. All right. Is that? It's eight. Okay. Cool. One, two, three. So uh, let's do eight. let's do four and four. So one no. of you come over here. What? Yeah. Just just come over here. It doesn't mean anything. It's not a it's not a team battle. Hello, Niklaus. How are you today? Hi. I'm good. How are you? You're wonderful. All right. You make my day brighter every single day. All right. This game is called. Will it pee? Will it pee? Zuh. Zuh. Will it pee? Zuh. Zuh. <laughs> That's the name of the game. I know how to fix we that. Just we'll decided. just call it. We'll just call it. Will it pizza? Oh, will it pizza? Will it pizza? Will it pizza? Will it pizza? That that will works. It All right. Pizza? So the name of the game is really quite simple. We don't know if things will pizza. So we need help from our guinea pigs. There shouldn't be any. Minutes. I mean, our experiments. I mean, I don't think so. The kids we love. No, no. That's the right term to use. The I'm not listening to what you're saying, to be honest. It's with okay. You. It's not for you. Yeah. It's uh, fine. <laughs> all right. So if we can get the first representative from this side and the first representative from this side, we're gonna play a classic game of Bear Man Gun to see who gets the power Bear of choice. Bear Man Gun. Bear Man Simple Gun. Simple rules. Yes. Bear beats. Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> I'm a nerd. I swear. I know this. <laughs> I thought you just meant like Bear beats. Man. Bear does beat man. Yes. yes. I was waiting for you okay. to say it. Bear beats man. Man beats gun. gun. And gun, gun beats, beats bear. Bear. All right, so both of you turn around. It's like life-size rock, paper, scissors. And on the count of three, turn around and do your pose, all right? One, two, three. Go. Go. Well, that was disappointing. Practice <laughs> round. Practice right, round. Practice all right. round. Do it again. Do Real it again. round. Right when we say go, you jump and spin and pick one of the three. One, two, three, zero, negative one, go. Both oh, through gun. On. Go again. All right, all right. Three, two, one, go. Ooh, all right. Power bear. of choice. That means that you get to have the first choice. Let's give it up. He is going and to have the first choice of pizza. Now, up here, we have eight different pizzas, and, and we don't know gonna, if they're good. You want to list off the names? We can go back uh, and forth. Well, whenever he chooses it, we'll, we'll tell okay, him yeah, what yeah. it is. It's like literally what it is. Yes, um, it is literally what it is. Literally It's literally what, what it, is. it is. So you need and to choose. And there is no reason why they are covered. five. Four, Four, three, three two. two. All right, here's We've Joseph. Got the pizza, 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 pizza oh, no. which is a pizza with a Lunchables pizza on the pizza. That actually sounds pizza. really good. That sounds really good. Pizza. All right. All right. Bone appetite. Bone. <laughs> the whole thing? No. Oh. Just, Just like, most of it. Get to the middle of it. Get to the middle. Let's go, yeah. Jude. Have a little fun. While Jude is eating, we're going to get the next <laughs> contestants. Come up here, and you get to wait to choose yours towards after all the winners choose theirs. Chris, you are up. All right. Oh, the, the pizza it's, fell yeah, off the, the pizza. The pizza fell off the pizza. You're only getting one half okay. of your pizza. Anyways, I'll eat this back to pizza back. And some of that pizza. When I say go, you go. So go. What? Are you I think sacrificing yourself? I think he's just Oh, you're complicit. the man? <laughs> the bear beats the man. So you get to come pick up net pick. All right, next. you get to you get to have the next choice. How How's, is your pizza pizza? How is the pizza pizza? Bad. Bad. Lunchable pizza is the most disgusting pizza in okay. the world. Okay, that is not true because you haven't had Domino's. All right, up next, what, 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 what's okay? Anyways, let's get back to the game. All Those right, Lunchable so you pizzas liked. were my childhood. <laughs> I'm so glad you're back. You should have seen those. how well I was running the show without you. Probably not very good. It was amazing. All right. Well, you don't get to know. All right. I think that's enough. All right. You can sit back down. Man, that is disgusting. You put it back. So put you're going to choose the pepperoni pizza? Yeah. The pepperoni All pizza. Right. Let's see what it is. Oh. <laughs> That doesn't look pepper like pepperoni. and roni um, pizza. It's pepper and macaroni. So that's kind of the same. Get it? Because pepper, appetite. pepperoni, pepper, macaroni. I, I want to see you get a good three bites in, because that actually could be good. That actually probably, it actually is, probably good. is good. What you thinking? 
It's actually Did, good. Should we start a restaurant? We can call it Joko Cobro Kojo food. Pizza Pizza. Well, I can't say that. Eat all I, about it. Ooh, we could call it Eat All About It, and it can be like newsy themed. Anyways, <laughs> next round. Can I take this down with me? Sure. Yeah, sure. sure if you want it. <laughs> all right. Next round, Bear Man Gun. Back to back. Bear Man Gun? So there's Bear Man Gun. That was, that's, that's, that's one of them. Uh huh. All right. All right, now both of y'all turn around. In three, two, one, go. Gun Ooh. to gun. The bullets Ooh. hit and no one wins. Yeah, Next, the bullets go again. hit each other. Three, two, one, go. Gun to Ooh, gun. Same right. thing happens. They're really accurate, all guys. All right. Three, Ready, set, go. Two, one, go. Gun to gun. Okay. Uh, Ready? Okay. Three, two, go. Come on. <laughs> all right. Neither of you can pick gun. It's just bare man. Three, two, one. Go. Ow, my hands. <laughs> you win automatically. Yes. <laughs> you you come, right, on come on up. up you get the power of choice. <laughs> Which one do you choose? Which one do you want to show the audience? We got, we got a lot going on here. You rando. want the rando. rando. What is the rando, you ask? I don't know. It's kind of random. And take a bite and figure it out. I don't know what it is. Should we like sell I that in the cafe? Okay. What do you think it is? Pizza. <laughs> well, yes. He's not wrong. He, he's not wrong. I think you should take another bite. I think you should take a larger bite. I think you should take yeah. a much larger bite. You are, you, are, you are biting around something. There is something that you are biting. I think you should take one more bite. Because you were biting around something, buddy. Oh, no, 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 no. You, there you yeah, go. There, there you go. What it, What'd you think? Is it good? I made it. My mother taught me how to cook. So the rando pizza is Sour Patch Kids and jalapenos. <laughs> With mozzarella. With mozzarella cheese. On top. But that's just kind of pizza. You want this? You want it? Uh, <laughs> well, I guess, I guess we shouldn't. Do you want it? No, no, no. No, no nope. we can't. Nope. You know, All kind of right, it. five pies remaining. All right. First round, Next last competitors. one. All right. <laughs> All right. Apologize. Turn around. Three, two, one, go. go. Ooh, Gun beats bear. you win. You Gun win. beats bear. So you get up right. here. You get to come choose. You get to choose. Whichever one you'd like. Which one do you choose? What do you think? The pizza, pizza pie. pie. Pizza pie. What do we have? It's cherry pie filling. On a cheese pizza. You got this. Ooh. Just take a good Look bite at out that. of that. Look at that. It's a something. pizza pie. It's a piece of pie. You got this. One bite. One bite to change pizza it all. Pizza pie. You know, like Neil Armstrong said once, I'm hungry. He one probably bite, said one that. One bite, and everyone knows the rules. One bite. That was no, awful. No, no, that that's not a bite. You need one cherry. A mm, trash can? You have a hoodie. We have a trash can? Uh, uh, Asher, open your uh, hands. No, no. Okay, okay. I know. You got it. Oh, yes. Chew it. This microphone is expensive. It's good. There you go. We got a special trophy for you. Hey oh, and How she's was it? spitting it. That's not what you're supposed to do with trophies. Horrible. That's not a I don't I don't think you know what trophies are like. All right. And well, we now we are down to the losers bracket. The losers bracket that means that you have the worst pizzas maybe. Because maybe one of these well, is good. Because the people that won definitely were winners. So let's see. Let's have a, let's have the guys go up against each other. All right? Oh my gosh. All Why right. is this pizza so heavy? It's like five pounds. Yeah, That's I know. Not even it's really joke. heavy. All right, fellas. All right. Three, two, one, go. Go. I think he's dead. Okay, Rigo. <laughs> Rigo. Rigo. All right, Rigo. Rigo. Three, two, one, go. Man Ooh, beats gun. He won. Yep. All right, so you get the next choice. So now you come You get the pizza. next choice. <laughs> All right. Hey, well, everyone's eating a pizza. Everybody's eating a pizza. Yeah, yeah. Now, which of these 
four delicious pizzas would you like mm. to have? For people who are wondering, we have cheese pizza, PB and J, pizza, Piazza. and pineapple pizza. Which one are you feeling? That was too big to be a regular pizza. Okay. But he just walked away from coming. Which one? What are you thinking? Three, two, one. Cheese, cheese pizza! pizza! Wow! Look at all that cheese. That would probably... Are you lactose intolerant? Yep. No. You lie really good for being in a church. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's see this. How are you going to grab that? Can you that? even lift it? <laughs> do, you want it? do you just want to go, like, face in? Do you go. just want to go face in? You, you might want you you to take your mask I'm, off. I'm taking a few steps back, it. yeah. I, I, don't, I don't trust what's about just, to happen here. Just, 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 just. I think, just, yeah, yeah. That didn't work. That didn't work. That, that didn't it kind of did. Didn't work. It kind of did. Did the cheese melt? Sort of. I think it's more of a protective layer. You know how ice cream has those like chocolate shell things? You know how ice cream has like the chocolate shell things? We just did that with pizza and cheese. <laughs> okay. You know we're, gonna, what? we're getting a, a piece of silverware to be able to cut oh, this off. Oh, all right. Well, wait, I got it. I got it. I got it. I got oh, it. Oh, oh, it's actually off the plate. It's off the plate, oh. man. You got to come Here now. Go. Here you go. It's not, it shouldn't be all cheese. Take a big bite. Oh, I love how take your back is to the audience bite. and Turn nobody can see. <laughs> Turn the audience. <laughs> he did take a bite, although none of you could see it. I think, I think he needs to take another I, bite. I think he needs to take another bite. I think he, he just needs to anybody. like chomp into it. Oh, I don't want to watch. <laughs> yes. Yay! Yes. Don't you feel, don't you feel so connected now? <laughs> I, I so don't sorry. know if I can ever look all at right. pizza the same again. And with and that, ladies. we have three remaining. And the ladies. Let's do, let's do the ladies' battle. All right. All right. In five. You guys are battling for the pineapple pizza, PB&J, or the pizza. pizza. Ready? Three. Five, four, three, two, two one, one, go. go. Gun to come gun. Come on. Come on. You got to do it again. Guns should on. be outlawed in church. Honestly. It should just be bear and So man. should bears, if you think about it. Three, two, one, go. Gun beats Winner. bear. Winner. Yeah, gun should be fair. outlawed and then it wins. Yeah. <laughs> All, right. All right. Three Which more pizzas. Which would you rather have? We have the PB and J pizza and pineapple, pineapple pizza. pizza. What do you choose? Which one are you feeling? Mm. The, the pizza. pizza. Yay! It looks like baby food because it's peas on pizza. It's a pizza. It works. Aren't we so funny? No. <laughs> I will be putting my resignation in tonight. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> I don't get paid. Yeah. Pizza. 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 It's, <laughs> it's just a cheese. Pizza. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it just broke in half. No, that doesn't count. Mm. No. Nope. So, so you got you the, have to get the part, the but, in but you still need the za. You got to take got a bite from right there. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, a big old bite. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, there you go. I think great. Okay, well, That's we, fair. we try. All right, final round. Final round. Come on down. All right. And whoever, whoever loses this gets the last pizza. Is it the yeah, worst? I don't, don't know. You don't have to choose. Is it the best? I don't know. All right, of losers? <laughs> the final Ready. championship of losers. Go! Oh, all right, gun. all right. So, man, yeah, here's gun. here's the game Wait, that you want to play. Did you do all right, man or bear? You can do. Did you man or bear? bear? That's bear. Bear. Oh yeah. Here's here's the game that you want to play. I'm sorry, I'm not paying attention. Maybe you think one of these is grosser than the other. She eats the grosser one automatically. I really want the gross one. You want the gross one? So. I really like peanut butter and jelly. No. Uh, and I know that's not peanut butter and jelly, but I. Want okay. It now. Okay. <laughs> So do you do you want the PB and J or the pineapple pizza? The peanut butter and jelly. The PB and J. The PB he and wants J. He the PB and J. Let's what did look he get? at it. It's just a pizza. It's just That's a pizza. It. Nothing different about it. I don't trust Nothing whatsoever. It. Nothing jelly. different about it's the, the worst pizza. One. I heard that bite. I wish I didn't. 
Asher, do you want to tell the wonderful people what was on that pizza? PB and J, although you may think it stands for peanut butter and jelly, it actually stands for pizza, comma, butter, comma, and jelly. How much butter did you put on that, Asher? Half a stick. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are going to be breathing butter to the point where anybody I, you speak oh to in the next week will have I can smell the butter. <laughs> All Everybody right. you talk to in the next Everyone month. Everyone give Keegan a big round of applause. There you go. And that leaves you. You are our lucky loser. Let's get up on the stage. And you, your prize How? How? for the last one standing is a pineapple, pineapple pizza. pizza. And it's just that. It's not extravagant. It's a cheese pizza we really thought that with it'd be. pineapple chunks on it that are massive. That's so many. Gosh. How is it? Yeah, it's whatever. Is it not good? That's a little anti It's because Asher cooked it. That's why it was yeah, not good. That's true. Yeah. Can yeah, you can I did, throw it out. I did you go to it. culinary school, actually. Well, thank you guys for joining us again on this wonderful Wednesday night. Asher and I are no longer opening a pizza store because none of those were good. But it's good to be back. Without further to do, further to further to do. Further ado, uh -huh. don't stop believing, keep on dreaming, and enjoy your sleep, and we'll see y'all next week. <laughs>